whether you have your father in your life or not, you have a heavenly father. And he can teach us these lessons. He's been teaching me these like the last, since I left Nike, a man, my life, who I am, just everything is, an, uh, it's all him. These are lessons that like, now I can um, teach Micah and I can teach MJ in a, in a way that's healthy, that they can see what patience looks like, what being present looks like from a man, being meek, what that truly means, how to truly walk in that and operate in that, turning all of that over to the Father and allowing him to work and just being obedient and being repentant and not being afraid to fail, but operating in courage. As your wife, I appreciate you so much. Welcome to the Godbolt Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Godbolt, with my beautiful wife, Jade Godbolt. We believe that marriage God's way is the most powerful catalyst towards healing and holiness for you and everybody after you. And because you've been walking through these seasons where God has been like, you know, work on your service, work on your patience, work on being present. It's also been teaching me how to receive those lessons from you because you are the spiritual leader of our household, right? So as you're walking with the Father in these things, I'm witnessing one. And two, you're establishing that it is part of this walk, part of this life to continue to learn, to continue to grow, and to then share it with other people. And so you share with me and then I share with our children. You also share with our children as well. But that order is there from the get-go in our household. And then it just seeps out to our community, to people we interact with. And that's all starting with you as my husband, as the leader of our household. And I don't think that we could have appreciated Back then, all of why God takes you through those lessons and also that they will continue because you're not perfect in the sense that you are without flaw. But with all of those lessons, you have become more complete like our father is complete. And I don't and I can honestly say that you don't run to things the way you used to. You don't run to porn. You don't run to clothes. You don't run to culture. You don't run to women, other women. The only place you run to is literally the father or me. And now you have righteous men around you who are also there. And so what's amazing to me is that when you finally don't need anybody's approval for how you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to live, God brought men around you Because I think deep down, you always desired deep relationship with other men. And the enemy has really tried to poison and taint your ability to have relationship with women, with men, even with children, even with our oldest, Ari. Like, But relationship, if you can lock in and really start to invest time and energy and effort and say yes to an intimate relationship with the father as a as a man yeah. as a husband as a father like we are literally proof and evidence of what that can do and you yeah. and you've done that and you continue to do that and it's not something you do for one season yeah it just continues and our lives are so fruitful for that yeah i didn't learn these lessons as a kid and as we're talking i just heard like you know these are the lessons that we are supposed to be teaching our children and um whether you have your father in your life or not, you have a heavenly father. And he can teach us these lessons. He's been teaching me these lessons. Like the last, since I left Nike, a man, my life, who I am, just everything is, an, uh, it's all him. And so he's been teaching me all these different things, these different lessons 
to where it's like, wow, like that's the, like I wouldn't have chosen any of this for myself. Like none of it. I wouldn't have like You wouldn't have even been able to comprehend the life we live now. At all. And when you look at all of these lessons, like these are lessons that like now I can um teach Micah and I can teach MJ in a in a way that's healthy that they can see what patience looks like, what being present looks like from a man, being meek, what that truly means, how to truly walk in that and operate in that. And yeah, it's it, it's from where I came from and what I thought my inadequacies were to turning all of that over to the Father and allowing him to work and just being obedient and being repentant and not being afraid to fail, but operating in courage. And yeah, it's just, it's been a journey that I couldn't have ever imagined. Well, as your wife, I appreciate you so much. And I thank you for embracing these seasons of service, of being present, of patience. It's funny because (laughs) in each one of these seasons, while you're learning it, you're vocalizing it, right? And so I, even now for me, like, you know, anxiety was a very um, big struggle for me and still is. It's a daily walk for me to like, you know, um, not go too far ahead in my thinking and my visualizing of the future and what's to come and all those kinds of things. But in my head, I just have you saying like, be present, be present, be present. And I'm like, shut up. Stop telling me to be present. But it's like, that's a lesson I needed too. So it's like, how beautiful is it that God uses the safe space of our marriage to teach you something you definitely need, but something that I need just as much. And he knows to teach you a certain way for it to stick. And then he knows to teach me in a certain way for it to stick, knowing that as a wife who loves her husband and wants to follow you wherever you go, to have you be the one that teaches me how to be present, for you to be the one that teaches me how to serve, for you to be the one to teach me how to be more patient. That's only because the Father is very aware of how we both need to be specifically taught and specifically catered to. And and he does that without it being this, you know, these catastrophic situations happening all the time. It's not yeah. always going to be like after this big fight, we then realize that, it, or it we have to. It doesn't even, what we've learned is like it over the last, you know, two years, three years, almost three years of marriage. It doesn't have to be a catastrophic fight. And if it's a catastrophic fight, we talked about how that, you know, led to you learning what love truly is mm-hmm. and like how that looks in action. Right. But that's not God's preference. Right. So like now we have very few, very few fights like that because it doesn't, it doesn't, it, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I've actually learned this in, in all of our catastrophic fights, that if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, it never gets to that. Yeah. No matter what you're doing. Yeah. Because even now I can see, okay, it's getting to, Far, let me pull back. Let me give her a hug. Let me do something because it's wild. I used to think that because I had that, that you were supposed to have that too. Mm-hmm. And now realizing that as we were designed to lead, we have that so that we, we can see what's going on, we can yep. assess the situation, then we can know what to do through the from the Holy Spirit to defuse a situation and to redirect that boat like we need to go in a different direction because i kid you not babe like i don't have that muscle in me i just don't because i'm all feeling right your feelings made flesh like women are that is who we are in our femininity 
we are so emotional because we're so spiritual and we can pick up on things. And even when you're in a funk and you don't think I know you in a funk, but I know you're in a funk, it's because I can pick up on it. But the thing is, our hearts and our emotions can deceive us at times because it's like we can't pull ourselves back. And I think that because of just how I've grown up and situations I've been in, I get to a place where either if it's a catastrophic fight, I think you're going to leave me and I'm going to be alone. Like I have that. It's like my first place that I go or the other direction that I go is like I will... I don't know, feel like I'm going to get thrown away. Maybe that's the same thing as the first one. But really, it's this feeling like, I know. Now, but as I've healed, I know that now. So even when like my flesh wants to go in that same cycle of like getting all riled up and like I can't hold, pull myself back, you're there. And you have this ability to like diffuse, redirect that I need. And that's the beautiful thing. It's like we help each other. It's not just me helping you do whatever you want to do. It's you also help me like, you know, kind of come back, regain focus. And, you know, I have these moments where I'm, you know, struggling with my anxiety or I'm like, just literally like, I don't always believe that my high intense emotions are my fault. I think a lot of times they are attacks on me. They're all t- they're attacks on us because the enemy knows that I, if I'm out here without God's hand on me, I've been into something or thinking certain ways or whatever, and I haven't been repentant and I haven't been on my stuff and I've left a door, even a crack open. He's trying to get to you and he's trying to get to me. So even if it's not even anything on me, he's trying to get to you always. And you're more solid in that than even I am because you're quicker to say you're sorry and you're quicker to repent than I am. And so it's like even in the smallest ways of just, you know, falling back into old ways of thinking even, I open that door for the enemy to allow or to tempt my flesh into going back into an anxious state, going back into an angry state. And when that used to be my default, when things got tense, now it's really rare for me. But if I do go there, it's like, okay, something is off. And you always know, I would say most of the time, you know, Holy Spirit usually puts it on you like, okay, something is up yeah, and let me help her calm down and let's well, like figure out. And honestly, that's actually something that I've been going back to repent for because that just lets me know that like I missed, I wasn't where I was supposed to be even in that one degree that led to that. Mm -hmm. So I have to go back and repent even for that because yeah, I should know. Yeah, Like you're attached to me. It's like having an ailment in your body. You didn't know. It's like, no, you should have been able to feel that something was going on. So if you, couldn't that means you were distracted by something else yeah and i mean it's it's you know it's fair we we miss things sometimes but yeah. i think that it's just our goal is to always be on the same sure. page and especially because you know we are one it's like we need to be aware of our body we need to be aware of our spirit we need to be aware of like how we're moving and how we're how we're going and through these different seasons you've had recently of growth as a person, but also as a husband, it's, it's filtered through onto me and to our children as well. And I think that that's really, um, incredible to be a witness of and also experience with you and something that I genuinely hope that more married couples, if they're not already experiencing it, that they start to, because I think that that's where so much of our healing is. Because even when I think about our issues before that are now not really issues anymore, it was always, for me, it was always a fear of being like thrown away. And I would get scared. And if we're arguing about something or whatever, we're going through something that the end result of it would be, you don't want to be with me no more and you're going to leave. 
And so for me, that's not just with you. <laughs> Clearly, mm. that's a, you know, something that stemmed from my childhood for multiple things. And it was a lie that I would get abandoned, that the enemy planted in me a long time ago, that I wasn't worthy of someone sticking around for me, that I wasn't worthy of love beyond like my issues, right? And yet God has used our marriage to be the place where I finally can heal from that in a real way. Okay. I was trying to do it. Got someone to read. So I just read this and it's been pinging on me. May each one take delight in reproval from the other and be diligent to perform their repentance. And may they be gentle and patient in all of their words, one to another. For improvement must flow easily between husband and wife. And it should be viewed with respect, it being the most important benefit from their fellowship together. Support one another in adversity and in hardships and draw together when in the midst of the spirit of difficulty. Be diligent to gain understanding and how to safeguard one another from temptation and adversity and from that which plies upon fears or frailties or insecurities. Magnify strengths in one another and nourish and uphold each other in the face of weakness. So it's like marriage is literally this cocoon for us to grow into who God created us to be so that we can be vulnerable, so that we can be open, so that we can be literally before each other. And then he can work through the other to help us through all those fears and those insecurities and all of that stuff. So that's why even communication, you know, through all this, loving each other through all this. You even get into a space where you can share what you just said because you didn't share that with me for you until after marriage. So like clearly you felt that for a very long time, but it was when not just marriage, but when you felt safe within our marriage that you could share those things and that I could heal to share what's going on with me as well. And to have the capacity to love me yeah, yeah, because that's the other part of it is that husbands have to love their wives regardless of how we treat you, what we're going through. That's the call on you. Same way for us. It's like we're supposed to submit to our husbands regardless of what you're doing, how you're doing it. We have a duty in that. And I think that people are quick to lean on what women are supposed to do or what or rather what wives are supposed to do versus what the husband's supposed to do and all of that. In this context of our conversation, we're talking about within marriage. So it is two people that have agreed to be with one another, focused on one another, doing life with one another, no what. forsaking all others. You know, and so when we speak about healing and relationship and what that's looked like for us, if you are someone that desires marriage, a godly marriage, a righteous marriage, a marriage that honors the kingdom, then this this is the content for you. This is it. This is you don't need to read a bunch of other books. You don't need to go to I mean, a bunch of conferences. You, to, you, can, you can, but, but. My, my point is this. <laughs> We only got confirmation after confirmation after confirmation of what we always knew innately, which was we ain't supposed to be fighting all the time. And I'm not supposed to be feeling this dissension with you or division with you. And there's something there. There's a reason why I'm blocked from feeling genuine joy with you or peace with you or comfort with you and vice versa, whether it be stuff that we've done to each other, stuff that we've done outside of our marriage, stuff that's happened to us before our marriage. But inevitably, we need to be able to address and become aware of where that thing that blocks me from being a loving wife to you 
the thing that blocks you from being a loving husband to me, we need to figure out what that thing is so that we can start walking on the journey to heal. Whether you caused it, somebody else caused it, whatever it may be. Because the thing is, we can get so wrapped up in why am I the way that I am? Why did this happen? Why? Why? Well, you know what? Sometimes We have to let go of the why because that's not even our job. God will focus on the why. God is very much so well aware, way more than you, as to why your life is set up the way that it's set up. Really what we should be focused on and how we got here, you and I, is since we are aware of the what, okay, so now where are we going to go? Well, and to that point, it it it's like this. Our only focus should be obeying the Father. No matter where you are in life, like stop today, start obeying. And I, I did not say yes to God and then immediately go to healing from father trauma or healing from pornography. Or healing from it, from insecure, like it. That's not the way this went. It was obey here, do this, do this, do that. And time passed, and you look, and it's like, dang, I done heal from that. I ain't got to do that. I'm and better here. You don't here. know how because and he you was, don't know how because he was he doing, was the doing surgery. it. All. He was doing it. He was doing it. You ain't seen nobody do heart surgery on themselves. You can't. You will mess more stuff up. Only he can. And it's not going to look like, n- y'all, none of this looked like I thought it would look. None of this looked like the way I envision having a family and all of these things. None of this looked like the way I would have drew it out, sketched it out, or any of that. I was, I was telling you, I think it was like last week or so, like, we don't realize how many small decisions make big outcomes, both good and bad. Like, it's not just before the action ever came out, it started in your heart as a seed, mm-hmm. good or bad. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just this sporadic, like no one just gets up and says, oh, I'm going to kill someone. No, Unless it, you it got started, a demon in you. So. I mean, but not <laughs> still, that demon had to be. Uh, invited yeah, there. Yeah. There has to be a covenant made Illegal, with it right. so that it could control you. Yeah. So it still started from something else. J- just like healing can start with something as small as, dang, I did do that. I did say that to her. But you know what? That's so. That's such a good point and such a good place for us to close out is that the situation, the cause of the hurt, the pain, the trauma, the issues, all of that could have been in your control or out of your control. But we know for a fact that the healing is in your control, whether you caused the issue, the sin, the drama, the problem or not. And that's the control, the agency that we have, regardless of our past, regardless of what's been spoken over us, what we've been committed to without our knowledge or agreement, all of those things, we choose whether or not we heal. We choose whether or not we want to go to the Father and ask Him to do what He does. To that point, I'm going to make this quick, got a few more minutes, but um, the prodigal son comes up in my head. And as much as he'd done and as far as he'd gone, he had to eventually make the choice to come back. It wasn't God chasing after him. It wasn't God going to where he was. It was him realizing this ain't it. Now we all have that innately in us to know like, no, that there's something off about this. And like, we've come to like say things like, well, if I didn't have the bad, then I'll take the, then I wouldn't appreciate the good. So I'm going to enjoy this season of bad because it's got to, and it's like, we don't have to experience that. All we have to do is stop where we are and come back. Just stop wherever we are 
I stopped where I was at Nike and climbing, doing all these things. I stopped where I was to turn around to something that I honestly hadn't experienced before. But I tried it. And it's the best decision that I've ever made. Because even in that decision, it led me to marry my rib. And having some beautiful babies. And having some beautiful babies. And many relationships and just all types of stuff. So it's, it's been well, We got a whole season to get into it. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All yes, right, y'all. Well, that's the end of today's episode. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the God Bolt Life podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us a DM or leave us a review wherever you're listening. We really appreciate having you with us on this journey.